y'all. Keto Nanny here to talk about international travel. Um, if you've been doing keto for a while, you've probably ventured out to local restaurants and you've discovered that it's relatively easy to, um, to get a good keto meal wherever you are in the U.S. Um, but you may be wondering, what about the rest of the world? Um, and so I'm here today to talk about traveling internationally. Um, I've just recently come back from a trip to Vietnam and Cambodia and while I wasn't 100% worried about um, what I would eat when I was in Vietnam and Cambodia which was odd because you know rice and noodles are the mainstay and that's completely um, verboten on keto and also a lot of times their sauces have cornstarch in it and stuff like that it's there's you know like in the US I don't eat Chinese food or I don't you know like I, I might go to Japanese and, and have like meat and veg and stuff but it's too problematic for a Chinese restaurant to find something that's really keto friendly so if you know something that's really keto friendly in a Chinese restaurant let me know I'd love to be able to order something um, but I wasn't so much worried about the Vietnam and Cambodia part because we were going on a cruise a river cruise down the Mekong and one of the beautiful things about cruises, and I've never been on a, I had never been on a cruise before, um, be it river or oceanic, um, but I have heard, you know, that food is plentiful and there is a wide variety. Um, and at the last resort, you know, there's things you can special order. So I wasn't worried so much about the food there, because um, even if I was going to have like local cuisine, I could ask the people on the boat you know what's in it or ask to not have certain things put in it oftentimes I would say okay don't put the noodles in the broth but add extra veg um, that kind of thing so I food on a cruise actually for keto cruising is probably the best thing in in the world um, as long as you have willpower to stay away from the bread and the dessert areas um, you're golden so I wasn't so much worried about that and it turned out that my concerns were like not having concerns were, was right on target because it was easy 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 um, for 10 days to stick to the program um, and when I did go off keto because there were times when I was low carb not very low carb and definitely not keto um, 90% of the time I was but there were times I weren't I consciously to, to coin uh, Gwyneth Paltrow's uh, phrase, I consciously unketoed. Um, and I, you know, with great deliberation, I would know, okay, I, I'm, I'm going to have dessert tonight, or we're going to the chef's table, which was this fancy, elegant um, restaurant inside, you know, in the, in the ship. You had to sign up for it to, to be able to go there. And I'm like, I'm, I'm going to not have any carbs breakfast or lunch in fact you know extend my fast as long as possible and kind of save up because I knew that I was going to sample everything not a lot I don't think I went crazy um, but I didn't worry about it I was on vacation I wanted to experience everything I could experience I didn't want to derail my keto experience but I also didn't want to um, you know prevent myself from having a good time so consciously, uh, consciously unketoed for the chef's table, and also one night I decided I kept hearing everyone kept raving about the, the homemade ice cream, and so I said, okay, I'm going to have some one night. And so I had a scoop of chocolate ice cream, and it was very good. One scoop was enough. Um, I didn't have to go crazy. Um, so eating on a on a cruise, whether it's an ocean cruise or a smaller river cruise, easy easy for keto and in fact you know you don't even have to consciously un keto like I did you could really be strict keto um, and be fine and not feel like you were um, suffering or you know doing without or any of those things that typical dieting um, makes you do makes you feel where I was concerned was the long flight so it was five hour flight from Raleigh to San Francisco, not so bad. You know, I had I had breakfast before I left. Um, got a cup of tea at the airport, and then I just had some. You know, they don't give you anything on U.S. flights, so uh, I had you know had some nuts in a bag, mixed nuts, and I also of course brought my lint, super dark chocolate, ninety percent chocolate, um, with me. I had a bar in my 
carry on and had a bar in my um, checked bag so that I could have something on the ship just in case, you know, um, I got hungry. Um, unlike an ocean cruise, this river cruise, they were set meal times. So it wasn't like you could graze all day long um, whenever you felt like it. So I kind of had to adjust my intermittent fasting as well because um, we were out and about very active during the day um, and I did not want to I don't know feel weak or whatever I really wasn't sure what how I was gonna feel I mean it was very very hot April is the hottest month in Vietnam and Cambodia so um, I did have breakfast I'd have eggs and some bacon and then when we came back I would have a light lunch like some meat and cheese um, some veggies and then I would have a dinner uh, a very keto friendly dinner so that is you know that was easy that the meals on the ship was easy um, but like I had to adjust a little bit because this cruise it wasn't like you could eat all day long you could not you know so you had to you had to be a little aware of that um, but what I was more concerned about was the flight so I had little baggies of mixed nuts um, I had my chocolate um, when I got to the airport um, you know, you can get like um, beef jerky, little baggies of jerky, um, had that as well. And so that kind of got me through the five hour flight. I didn't really need anything in that flight. So I just, I munched on a couple of nuts just because I was bored. Um, and then when I landed and got into San Francisco, I ate there, totally keto. I had a 13 hour layover before my 1 a.m. flight to Hong Kong. And so I just went sightseeing and kept busy and got back to the airport in the evening, ate a healthy dinner. I made a salad that sometimes the terminal, some terminals at some airports are really great about what food you have and the options that you have. And others, you have to be a little creative, whereas maybe you get a burger and you, you know, you get rid of the bun. Um, I, they, this, the only place that was serving like, a variety of food or anything that looked, sort of interested me at that time was this place where you could get a salad and a sandwich and so I just scraped off everything off my sandwich put it on my salad and made myself sort of a chef salad so that's what I had um, before I went um, I did something on this flight that I have never done before but I think I'm gonna do for every flight that ever gives you a meal option I chose gluten-free as my meal plan and my thinking at that time was that, well, that would at least eliminate like pasta um, uh, as being part of the meal. And it doesn't eliminate, you know, rice and, and potatoes and stuff like that, but it at least would eliminate like the pasta meal. And so like for breakfast, um, you know, the, the eggs with, you know, like eggs with cheese, a little bit of tomato and some asparagus, perfect. Um, I had like a piece or two, a melon, because I did not have the nighttime meal. So on a long flight, on a long ass flight like that, no matter what time the flight starts, they serve you dinner about an hour and a half or so after the flight goes. So that was flipping 2 a.m. in the morning. 2 a.m. in the morning, California time. On the East Coast, it was 5 a.m. in the morning. And I was like, I didn't know what time. I actually spent a good deal of this trip not knowing what time or day it was, um, even though I had a great time. Um, so I didn't have it, and that might have been a mistake because they don't serve you the next meal until about two hours before they're going to land. So those nuts and my chocolate bar came in handy because I did sleep some, not a whole lot, but I was up and about drinking water, making you know, bugging the flight attendants for tea, water, trying to stay hydrated and mobile. So um, you know, wearing my compression socks, just trying to you know do everything I could to. 14 hour flight um, to make it as healthy as possible. So not having that meal, that might have been a technical error on my part, I don't know. Um, I mean, I got through it, but I was really, really hungry. And so when it came with a, like a little bun, I had half of it. I was like, okay, you know, I've got to do that. Land in Hong Kong, we have a two hour layover. You got to race through the airport to get to the next flight. Next flight had breakfast also. I'm telling you, international flights are the best. They actually serve you food. 
on a two hour flight in the US, you don't, I mean, you get a thimble full of something like water and maybe, you know, Diet Coke. On a two hour flight in Asia, this has been, I've been on several uh, Asian flights, you get a meal and you get, you know, a decent amount of, of liquid. And you, you know, of course, you can keep asking for more, but, um, you know, that your first amount is a decent amount, unlike, you know, in the US where you don't get a meal. Um, anyway, so I had, I ate the eggs on that one, ignored all carb, garbage. Um, so I had probably double, but I was really hungry. And so I think I probably needed it. Um, because then it was hours and hours and hours before we, uh, once we landed in Vietnam, it was, you know, like six hours or so, four or five hours before we had a little snack again. At that point, I'm so tired, so confused. I had like a few slices of meat and some cheese. Um, and that was it. And then I didn't eat dinner that night. I went to bed at a, you know, like pretty early. Um, and then the next day I started on local time zone. So that's usually my protocol. I suffer through the first day being very confused about what meal time it is, where I am, um, suck it up. And then the next day I'm on the right time zone. And after that it was okay. I mean, it's, I was still getting up early, like 4 a.m., 3 a.m. in the morning. I was very confused, but I was mostly in the right time zone, which I thought was a win. Um, and it, I was able to sort of stay with what the meals were and not go off course, um, you know, and not let myself get too hungry. Um, but if I, you know, like if I skipped a meal, um, I was fine with it. It was because I had had, you know, breakfast and lunch. And normally I only have, you know, like a brunch and dinner. So, you know, I, I really didn't think there was any problem um, with the way I was eating. So in Asia is easy. Um, even if you're eat like we went out and ate at a couple of local restaurants, um, I had the stir fries and I would just have the meat and the veg, took it like a teaspoon of the, you know, the rice just because it was so delicious. Um, but I didn't have, you know, and you, and you have to have like bottled water or bottled soda. You can't have like anything with ice there. Um, easy. Um, you know, and there were other meals that we could have, that we got where it was just like, you know, like a fish and some veggies, um, delicious, very nicely seasoned. Um, I stayed away from, I tried to stay away from things that had sauces. Um, but for the most part we ate on the boat, um, or at hotels, um, where you could, you had a little more control over what you were eating. So I may have not had like the legit native experience, um, except for a little bit when we forayed out into like Phnom Penh and, um, Ho Chi Minh City, but I was able to stay on target um, and I didn't come down with any diseases. So I was like, this is great. Um, if you're going to Europe, Europe is so easy. I've been to many countries, well, you know, mostly in the uh, British Isles, um, Republic of Ireland, British Isles, and it's easy. Meat and veg, you know, ask to substitute if it comes with potatoes. If you, you know, if you're in a pinch and you're doing fast food, take the bread off, um, have a salad. You know, it's easy. Europe is just as easy as um, the U.S. You know, if you can figure out something to eat in the U.S., you can figure it out in Europe. Um, you know, as long as you're not of the mindset that you're denying yourself. So, like, if you're in France and you really want, you know, like, your vision of France is chowing down on a baguette, then I think you should have some because <laughs> you're in France for crying out loud. You should live your life, enjoy yourself, um, have, a, have some, have that be your only carbs of the day and you know, you'll walk it off and you'll get back onto it. Um, you're not going to be in France forever. So you don't have to, you know, and you don't have to go crazy, you know, croissants and everything. You can, you can get croissants anywhere, but I have to say the bread in Europe is really, really good. So, when I'm in Europe, I do allow myself to have bread. In Ireland, their brown bread is delightful. I'm going to have a slice. I'm not going to suffer and say no, because, um, you know, that just doesn't make any sense. This is a long-term lifestyle change. This is not a temporary diet, but it has to be sustainable. 
And that means that when I'm traveling, I cut myself some slack and I go low carb, not very low carb, high fat. I just go low carb. Um, and then I, as, as long as it's you know possible and I can manage it, I do very low carb, but I don't sweat it um, if I can't. So traveling, it's not an excuse to go off you know, the plan. Um, you can do it. It's easy. I really feel like the plane flight, you know, the, um, that could be the hardest part because you're so tired. When you're tired, you're less, you know, you're less in control of yourself. Oh, and another point too on cruises and something to be aware of is alcohol. Alcohol is pretty, you know, readily available. Um, and they really promote, you know, they're always offering wine or beer or, um, you know, gin, which is my favorite. <laughs> um, I, you know, and so you have to be careful with that because, uh, yes, you can have hard liquor uh, and you can have some wine on keto, but it's that alcohol is going to be metabolized fat first. So it's going to, you know, it's going to stall your fat burning a little bit. But to me, the biggest thing is that it's just like being tired and jet lagged can kind of affect your willpower. So does alcohol. I mean, um, you know, everybody knows that, you know, you, you make stupid decisions when you've had too much alcohol and food can be one of them. So if, you know, if, if you're susceptible to that, um, if you have a hard time, you know, once you've started like stopping or just actually it's better not to have. So just be aware that alcohol is very, you know, flowing on cruises. Um, and so that might be something you need to be aware of. It's different like when you're in a hotel and you're just hopping around by yourself. It's not being pushed to you that much because you have to actually ask for it. So um, just be aware. Um, it's easy to, you know, like I haven't been anywhere yet. Um, my next trip, my next trip next year, I hope to go to Morocco, um, and we'll see how that goes. Um, last year when I went to Africa, I wasn't doing keto, but looking back on what we had, all the food we had in all the different places, I think it would have been completely doable. So I have to say, I have not been anywhere yet that would prevent me from being at the minimum low carb. Um, versus very low carb. I think you can do it um, anywhere you go. Just prepare for the airplane flight. Um, hydrate. Um, a lot of times, you know, we know that we get hungry and we're really, we think we're hungry, but we're really thirsty. Um, airplane, you know, do the pressurization of that cabin. You really need to hydrate, 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 and water is much better than alcohol or soda. So, um, you know, you can do it. Until next time, keto on and happy travels. Bye.